One of my biggest inspirations was my grandmother. I grew up around her showing me around nursing homes. And to fight for that dream, I've always wanted to be a nurse. This patient that injured me, he was a recovering alcoholic. He even grabbed my wrist, crushed my wrist. Dr. Hopp had the first MRI completed. There is a scaphate lunate tear and some swelling to my carpal tunnel space. But that just was the beginning of specialist after specialist not believing that anything was wrong. I couldn't do my normal activities of daily living. I love to cook and bake with my kids. I couldn't do that. They're too precious to me. My husband's too precious for me. I was a nurse to my father-in-law through his injuries before he passed away. There were too many things on my plate that I knew it was necessary for me to figure this out. I had already had three x-rays, two MRIs, and resource after resource was being thrown at me. And since no one otherwise could say why I was having that much pain, the, the surgeon actually ended up correcting for severe decor veins, shredded scaphate lunate, and then a complete tear of my TFCC. However, one thing did stick out to me is that surgeon basically did the surgery and her job was done. It became this big ordeal of no, the pain's in your head, and it just was a cycle that you just keep going down this drain of, it's all my fault. What turned out to be just my wrist probably was my wrist and my shoulder that were actually injured um, due to resisting the patient pulling on me. I went back to the surgeon out in Dublin. He told me that, yes, you do have something wrong because the MRI that he had done on my shoulder, neck, elbow, and wrist he said, maybe you should change careers. Maybe this is not the career for you. I mean, look, you already got injured twice. You turn down and you're like, I don't get, what am I supposed to do? You know, because I've always been that. These guys love their job, you know, and uh, being forced to retire, especially early they want to, it can be devastating. It can be personally devastating. So. First responders and nurses do not want to be attempting to navigate the work comp process on their own. They're up against perhaps employers, which managers, even doctors, that the initial doctors that they're sent to that are more concerned with pinching pennies than necessarily providing uh, the treatment necessary to get them back to the job. So uh, attempting to navigate this process on their own, especially if they've never been through this before, is not a good idea. I was just lost. The amount of medication I was put on, gabapentin, baclofen, Percocet as a zombie, because in order to have any interaction with my kids, I had to medicate myself because of the anxiety and the pain of what still was ensuing. And then Dr. Hopp handed me a card that said Cardinal Point and Scott on it. For me, it was like, okay, it was a turning point. There were less denials, and even when there were denials, we were able to turn things around really quickly instead of having this huge delay in care. They're really there for you, emotionally and for the ACON guidelines. They're, they're gonna be there to support and walk alongside with you. <laughs> I remember 48 hours after surgery, the only pain I had was surgical. Hey. And it was like this realization that it wasn't in my head and I had to get the right advocates to help me move in that right direction. Yay, mommy, you made it! <laughs> and then I could actually start living my life again. Ready? There we go, ready? Good job. You're good at balancing, huh? Scott has battled injuries over the course of his career. This is why he has become so knowledgeable about the process. And so I, I highly recommend that the bargaining groups, especially our police and fire bargaining groups, hire and work with Cardinal Point Advisors.